Okay, so once we're happy with our FTP accounts, we can move on to a different section of cPanel. So as we scroll up and down, you'll see what we just looked at was the file section. Um, if we skip a few down, logs may be something we come on to another time, or security, or domains. Another thing you might be interested in is the MySQL databases section. Now if you click MySQL databases, you'll be able to see this screen. And as you can see in this account, there are none at the moment. It'll be the same when you create an account. If you want to add a database, what you can do that using this create new database section. So all you'll need to do to create a blank database is just think of a name. So in this case, I'll just call it data. And you can just click create database. And that will create you a blank database that you'll be able to connect to. But in order to connect to it, of course, you'll need a user. Because MySQL needs a different user in order to connect to a database. In this case, I'm going to call it the same, just so I can remember. So again, it's data, and again, you'll just need to think of a password. Of course, this doesn't have to be uh, the same password you use on your cPanel account, and it doesn't have to be the same one you use for your FTP account or any other account. This can be whatever you like. In this case, I've thought of a password, and you just need to click Create User, and it'll do so. Once that user is created, you'll be able to see it down here under the current users. Now, one thing you also need to remember to do with a database user is to add it to the database, because at the moment, this database doesn't have a user associated with it, so no user will be allowed to access it. What you'll need to do is click the user you want. In this case, we only have one. Click the database you want. In this case, we only just have one as well, and click Add. It'll bring you to this screen, which is saying what you want to allow the user to do. In most cases, you'll just allow it to do everything. So you just click that All Privileges section, click Make Changes, and now what you'll see is you'll get this prompt saying that the user was um, added and allowed on that database. If you click back, you'll be able to see here the user and the database. So now what you'll be able to do in your website is put, use that information to connect to this database, and you should be ready to go. Now another thing we might want to explain is just these other options under databases in case you're interested. The uh, MySQL database wizard is not something you might use too often. The phpMyAdmin is a tool for accessing a database, and so we'll come back to that in a second. And the remote MySQL is a function you can use to just add a other hostname or IP address. And for example, if you wanted to add a IP address to this, all you would need to do is just add your IP address that you want to add and then just click add host and it should do so. And in this case I just added a local one for example. If you want to remove one, just add a little X button and it will remove it just by clicking remove and you should be fine. Something else you might want to look at is the PHP My Admin tool and if you click that you will be able to access PHP My Admin. It will bring you right through to your PHP my admin and you'll be able to see all your databases you won't need to go through another login as you can see this is a database I made earlier it's completely empty so there's not really much I can show you with that if you have any questions about PHP my admin just let us know and we'll be able to help you with that